Kailash is right behind those clouds. You can't see it, but uh, it's there and I'll zoom in once uh, it comes up. So hello my friends and ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new video. This is the last day of my trip in Kailash. This is the last video that I'm going to be recording about Kailash. It's very sad because, um, uh, let me just make sure that it's not blurry. Should be fine. It's very sad. If it's blurry or not blurry, just keep watching. Uh, as long as you can hear me, that's important. So very sad because this is the most rem remarkable, rewarding thing that's ever happened to me in the entire planet's history. Maybe the most rewarding thing that has ever happened to me in this long cycle of birth and death. And yesterday as I was sleeping, I didn't want to go. I felt so sad. It was like my parent was leaving or I had to leave my father and my mother. And it was just, wow. I could, I didn't care about anything except I didn't care about anything else except Kailash. I was uh, laying in bed uh, in a guest house near the south face of Kailash and just crying, weeping for hours in my bed at night uh, because what I can see there, what this place is changing me into, what is it as what it has changed me, what I've become from it, and what. It actually is and how special this place is it made me think uh, and question also what is the most valuable thing in my life what do I value most these questions came up and so many other questions came up <sighs> let me get my mind straight and my thoughts across correctly what's the most important thing in my life what's the most valuable thing in my life it's Kailash there's nothing else it's not my Parents, I'm sad to say, it's not my mother or father or my sister or my relative or my brother or my money or my friends or family or my status or my health or mental sanity or clarity, nothing. Kailash, that's literally it. <laughs> Yesterday I was laying in bed, again I cried, and I'm thinking, oh my god, if someone came to me with like some option of getting a lobotomy, lobotomy is when they dig into your brain through your nose and just wiping all your memories and you don't know anything, and all I know is Kailash, I would take that deal. Well, not physically, I wouldn't do that physically, but that's energetic, that's what I wanted. All I want is that mountain. Wow, what it is, what it represents, it's too, it's too far for me to even, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say some words, okay? I'm gonna say some words. It's like, here's a little analogy, okay? Analogy is you played with Play-Doh, I'm sure, before in your life. And uh, maybe there's a, one gigantic block of Play-Doh the size of a house. And then you have a little Play-Doh, that's you. So you bring this little Play-Doh up to the big Play-Doh and somehow the Play-Doh energetically starts doing things and it starts morphing into each other. Into each other. And the smaller piece of Play-Doh gets changed by the bigger piece of Play-Doh. This is the worst example I could possibly give. It's terrible. One out of, one, one out of a hundred. But uh, still, I'm gonna keep talking, sharing my ideas. I'm gonna talk for, I don't know, 40 minutes or less. Uh, what else made me realize? Uh, yeah, again, I was in bed crying because this is so remarkable. The amount of change that I made in myself in just two night, two hours, because I had uh, time to relax and contemplate and think and meditate and be aware. It's like, it's a change machine, you know? It's a change factory. You want change? You want to create your habits, this little thing, oh, this little that, oh, this, you're addicted? Kailash. Okay? You go here, poof, gone. The amount of power it gives you is like a powerhouse. It's like an electricity producing station. You plug into it once, it'll be there forever. It will never go away. So also I wanted to sacrifice as much of my life to get as many benefits as I could and I did and I trekked various things and I really desperately wanted to see the south face of Kailash today because uh, that's the only face that I really didn't come close to. But, uh, and I tried sneaking out in the middle of the night or when we were all leaving tonight to the bus uh, to climb this mountain and I did. And then I realized it's just, it's, uh, I looked at the map and it's like so far away. And I knew if I would just keep climbing, there'd probably be more and more hills. And the altitude, it's so difficult to climb and I would hold my team back so long. So it kind of all worked out that as I started climbing, the Sherpas were walking, like, okay, God has my back. And it made me realize also I want to model Sadhguru Sri Brahma. I don't want to model anyone else. Sadhguru Sri Roma is the only man that I respect on planet Earth. Actually, not even Sadhguru. Uh, because that man has the intensity, has the structural integrity in himself energetically. 
to uh, do the things that I want to do. So I will, and I'm just kind of not sure how to appropriately socially do these things because he was very socially inappropriate, and you really can't do that in, the, in these days and age where they're going to lock you up. So that's one thing. Um, I've got lots of stones. i got like five, six stones from my relatives, from some friends. Very, very, very powerful. They're self-recharging. It's not some stone that you're going to... Uh, I don't see it losing any energy anytime soon. It's like if you do something, it just continues to self-recharge because it's been touched by this energy. It's the most powerful place on earth. I don't say this with any exaggeration. Let me uh, really... Last time I played around with this little setting that's currently active, I couldn't see my face. It was blurry, so I hope you can see my face, but I'm, I, probably you can. So I got some stones. I'm gonna be probably coming back here every single year. At least that's what I want to do. Like, forget what I want, what I don't want. That doesn't matter anymore. What matters is uh, this mountain's will for me. I'll do whatever this thing tells me to do and whatever it wants me to go, I'll do that. And it's a living intelligence. It's a cosmic entity. It's a cosmic secrets are inside of this thing. And I know what Kailash is actually. Unfortunately, I don't know what Sheila is still to this day. Maybe like 2%, 5%, 10%, that's being generous. Like, what the hell is that? I'm walking around this place. Apparently he walked his land and his wife was swimming in this lake. And I, I'm like, uh, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying my best. Like, how the hell does it happen? It's the most amazing, remarkable thing. And I can't figure it, but Kailash. Kailash, I understand it very well. It's, uh, my God. The north face of Kailash is like the most intense masculine energy alive on planet Earth. The south face of Kailash is very gentle, very nice. That's the place to go if you uh, want to stay for a long time. The east face of Kailash is like very childlike, playful, very uh, fun and good and happy and pleasant and gentle also and yeah like that and the west face of Kailash is like my god uh, I can't really say anything about the actual energy of the, the place because I, I haven't integrated with my body but the land itself is like you're walking on the body of Shiva so I guess Shiva knew that people would be starting their trip trick of it the, trek there so he just laid himself down on the floor like hey, you're just walking on my body here you go so I want to go here every day. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll go next year, if whatever the circumstances allow, because I, it took me four years to get here. The first time I realized the significance of Kailash, I watched, binge watched every single YouTube video about Kailash that Sadhguru has, because it's the authority that I want to learn from. And I really desperately wanted to go, but didn't have the finances, didn't have the, it wasn't the finances, didn't have the preparation, didn't have the, uh, the mental stability, didn't have the emotional stability, the spiritual, whatever. So lots of things had to align in 28 years it took, or 28 years now I am, that uh, I make it to Kailash, which still can't see the south face of Kailash. It's too bad, very unfortunate for you and for me also. Uh, so 20 years, I'm glad and I'm proud to say this. This is the most significant, rewarding year of my life. 28 is a big number in numerology and spirituality. So this is gonna take me very, very far. I should have spent longer time here. Should have spent three nights instead of I spent, I spent two nights, but everything happens synchronistically and magically for a reason. Um, I'm glad that the people that I went with are the people that I went with. I went with uh, Shalini, this uh, lady that lives in Australia. And the second, like the first few moments or few, first few minutes of her talking to me on the phone, I didn't see her profile picture. Her profile picture was a Sri Yantra. I just knew, okay, this is the person I'm going with. I trust her, I know her, I, I can hear her voice, I can see that Kailash has touched her very deeply, she knows what this place is. And it's, most importantly, it's safe. So I don't wanna go with some random company, I don't know what it is, who it is, they don't even know what they're doing. But hey, it's a few thousand dollars cheaper, it's much cheaper, no, uh, it didn't, didn't matter to me. This gave me a great first introduction. This gave me a foot in the door, I stepped inside of this, uh, you know. I, my toes got wet, or my foot got wet. My foot got into the cold river. And now I can comfortably see, okay, this is how cold it is. This is the temperature of the water. All right, let me just prepare and I'm going to dive ahead in, straight in. That's what I'm going to do. So my friends, I don't see anything more important that I can do. This is my intention. I don't have any intentions or goals or this is nonsense to me, but uh, this is just my feelings. You know, my feelings are coming out. Like I want to do this. 
I'm probably going to do this because logically, if I'm thinking, what's the most valuable thing I could do on my planet Earth is to take people to Kailash, the most powerful, the most sacred place on Earth. It's the center of the world. It's the center of the galaxy, the center of the universe, probably, maybe. Uh, energetically wise, it doesn't, even if there's a location geogra geographically, if the center of the universe is here, this is the center of the universe. I don't care what you tell me because this is holds the well-being for every living being in the universe. So whatever your little geometry or geography says, the center is false. That's wrong. Okay, this is it. If you're living next to a waterfall, the waterfall is the center of your world, okay? It's not, uh, it's not whatever you think it is. The waterfall is the source of your life. That's where your life is. Similarly, this, this is like 100 billion times more than one waterfall or any food that combines anything, every, everything. So when I was in the north face of Kailash, oh my God, almost died, nearly died. Second time that I've been closest to death next to uh, Sydney, Australia, when I almost drowned, I recorded a video. One of the first 84 videos I recorded, actually. You should watch that series, by the way. Watch my first video. You'll know what I'm talking about. My first video I ever published on YouTube. And if you watched it, good job. Congratulations to you. I'm sure you're much more in contact and touch with me. And I'm going to reward you and bless you <laughs> pretty much for the rest of your life. So good job, keep going. <sighs> Nearly drowned in Australia, Sydney, Australia. It was very terrifying and scary and also stupid. I just saw my body, left my, bo like, left my body almost. And I just saw if, if I do this, if I just let go of my will to live and I drown, I'll be so sad and pathetic. Oh my God, I'll be embarrassed as a ghost. Look at that, oh Jesus, look at this little corpse floating around. That'll be terrible for me. So I didn't make that mistake. I stayed alive, thankfully. This is the second closest I've been to. I'm like, Back in Sydney, it was like a 100%. Or like, you can't say 100% because I didn't die. But close to 100% or that's the intensity that I was at to death. 100. Uh, it doesn't go higher than that. It's like one one breath away from poof, gone. This was like 80%. I'm climbing this mountain. The second that we came to the north face, I didn't care about putting my bags down. No, no thank you. I <laughs> went straight to the... I wanted to see. And as I saw, I just... That's it. Okay, it sucked me in. I'm not going to check in or have breakfast or tea or dinner or whatever nonsense i don't care i dropped my bag right away in some little rock that i thought i was gonna remember where it is and then i just hiked straight up basically ran as fast as i could running is basically me walking five meters and then stopping for 50 seconds that's how it was the amount of oxygen that's lacking there the lack of oxygen the tiredness and whatever other very various combinations it was raining and it didn't matter to me. I was still gonna go. I was gonna go literally probably until I actually thought if this is a good, this is gonna kill me, then okay, I would turn around. But me experiencing some little psychological defects or pain in my body or even some catastrophic failure of my nervous system where I collapse, so big deal. <laughs> I've collapsed before, so I'll do this again. And I climbed, I climbed, I climbed. When I reached 80% of the way there, I thought, oh my god, maybe I should turn back. But <laughs> my. My good senses prevailed and I pushed forward, pushed through, and uh, I couldn't, I wasn't going to turn back. That was just not, not, no chance. No hope of that, uh, yeah, you returning to this place ever again. So I pushed through and finally I reached the plateau where it goes straight and I saw Kailash and I, the second that I reached there, I was like, oh my God, now I can breathe. It was just instantly all the little symptoms that I had, the headache, the, the heart felt like I was having a, having a heart attack. My le left side of my arm was numb and my heart was beating so weirdly, like skipping beats. I'm like, oh Jesus, what's going on here? Well, what's going on here is because we don't know what we're doing. Okay, I'm just 4,000, 5,000 meters above the ground. <laughs> climbing, climbing this for the first time. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I made it, made it to the top. Still can't see it, too bad. And when I made it to the top, my friends, that's it. Uh, I knew that I needed to go touch the mountain itself energetically. I needed to come close to this energy. And I did exactly that. Uh, physically, there was no need for me to go and actually touch it with my meat, my sausage fingers. But uh, I did come close enough where the energy overwhelmed me. And I got a sense like exactly what this is. And just like that, in a moment, this blue energy just touched me, touched my throat. That's it. I knew that uh, I came as close as I needed to possibly come and I can turn around. That's uh, surely exactly what I did. 
So the energies up there and that's into Kailash, uh, I've never experienced before because the intensity that's there. I don't think you can, maybe with some deep meditation, you can really touch this uh, from far away, like in, if you're in the United States or Mexico or somewhere else, but you have to make a visit here. This is no, you know, there's no excuse. You have to make a, a visit here. Maybe if it was a thousand years ago and you had to walk, swim from the Atlantic Ocean all the way here, then okay, I would, yeah, I would understand. But no, take a flight, take a bus, you're there. Okay, what's your excuse? No excuse. We're going next year. Okay, pack your bags. Uh, so what else? Yeah, so uh, I had that experience. Report my fears. I started coming down. I came down from the north face. Uh, then it was time for sleep. And I don't think I had any food because I just couldn't eat. So what am I doing? Then I lay down on my bed. When I laid down on my bed, my heart was like... I felt my pulse and it was like, Jesus, this has never happened to me before. It was so rapid. There was no pause. Was like, I thought, okay, uh, this is like a recipe for a heart attack. I couldn't even lay down because I was so scared. My heart was pumping so fast. And the worst part of it, I had no control over it. It was not like, you know, sometimes you really get excited or you really run and I, okay, I gotta calm down. And your heart kind of calmed down. I tried calming out again. I sat in the lotus pose and I just started relaxing, glucose my breath. And then one minute later, I check my pulse. Insignificant difference. So maybe slightly different, but still, it's like my heart is like basically I'm having a heart attack. So later, I thought, okay, this is just fear uh, that's being re that's releasing in me, and it was. And not only fear, the ele elevation, no doubt. But um, I managed to go pass through that and very difficult sleep. I thought I had to. I thought I was gonna turn around. I thought I was gonna have to cancel a trip. I thought I was gonna have to go all the way down. To a lower altitude because I can't breathe and <laughs> uh, what makes it worse is that I missed the last two days worth of the pills that they, they give you for altitude sickness that's another addition to that I'm like Jesus okay it's not good but fortunately that night passed and I woke up and I'm like okay I'm ready to go it's time to go and uh, do this trek I was very scared and nervous about because not scared but I was a little hesitant because the highest peak is 5,700 meters and I'm in this condition, I can barely breathe at night and we're at 4,800 meters so almost a kilometer difference and I thought, oh, this is gonna be bad but when I woke up, I felt okay, I felt reassured and everyone else is doing it, so I might as well do it by the way, in this whole trip, half of the people just like, didn't go, for some reason some of them uh, couldn't make it physically, their health deteriorated their uh, heart started going way out of control like actually dangerously and they had to be taken back to a lower altitude some of them actually went back to Kathmandu without seeing Kailash maybe they saw the, the south face but uh, they didn't go inside some people went inside they took horses which okay that's not the ideal way and in fact I noticed a big difference between taking a horse and actually walking you need to you need to exhaust yourself you need to burn away all the energy for you to be able to uh, draw something much bigger people that took the horse well they got benefits no doubt but it's not advisable it's not advisable at all uh, it's like probably, I don't know, 40% of the benefits you missed out on, which is a huge, huge margin. And some people went to the base camp of the North Face and then they, uh, something happened to them also, a health condition happened and they had to be returned. Some people, after they finished the, the trek down, they just took the car, they decided, nah, I'm not, I'm not doing this, I'm not sleeping here. They took the car and they drove all the way back to uh, where we are, Darjan. Hello. One of my Sherpas are coming here, and you can say hello. It's a gentleman that's helping me, that's helped us uh, with this whole thing, very helpful. So, yeah, so this uh, woman, Shalini, I'm very grateful for her, and hope that you're watching this video. Shout out to you, very uh, gracious that uh, you've uh, offered me this ability and given me this chance to do this, because, whew, I didn't know how to do this, you know? When you're going to a space like this, you have absolutely no idea. You've never seen this before, you've never, you've never been here before, you, you don't know anything. But uh, an expert is there, someone that's done this for many, many times, and someone who uh, can reassure you on basically everything. And so I trusted her and I went here and it was the right thing to do. Um, yeah, so that's it. So we only spent two nights in Kailash. One night was in the uh, north face of Kailash. Second night was in the south face of Kailash. And uh, next time around, I'm gonna plan at least four nights in Kailash in total. 
but overall in general I got to touch everything that I could touch here I've uh, really made an effort to involve myself and to put my energies inside this mountain so that I when I leave here I know geographically where everything is and I can draw upon it and there's nothing there's no blind spots that's exactly what I did so this mountain is familiar to me now uh, physically in every, in every sense so let me just see 20 minutes all right what else yes my friends so hopefully this thought goes into your head that in the near, near future maybe one two three ten five a hundred million years we'll uh, do this trek together so plan for that if you want to come with me uh, because I'm not a tourist here People sometimes go here for tourist reasons. Oh, Shiva, oh, Kailash, oh, yeah, this is... But uh, there's no, you know, I'm looking for for insane people. I'm looking for crazy people like I am. Uh, <laughs> uh, don't really care about my well-being, but very deeply care about uh, taking all this inside of myself. And not only that, not only crazy people I'm looking for, or not only insane people, but just nice, balanced people that want to pursue their spirituality and and uh, care about me and trust me and uh, find me worthwhile and also if you just want to come to the trip just because and uh, you happen to find me wait let's go so i'm making some plans here with some sherpa i don't know when is it going to happen again my life is in uh, shiva's hands uh, i'm not boy i'm not making any more decisions life is uh you can't dictate life like this. So that's it, my friend. That's enough talking for me for today. I hope that the mountain is not going to open up. So there's your chance right here. You can't see it. You better come and see it face to face, in person.